Are AIs, no code or low code going to take your web developer job? The simple answer is no. And if that's all that you wanted to hear, then you could stop watching now. But if you want to find out why I think no code and low code are good things, then stick around. This video is sponsored by Blazed Path. Blazed Path is a low code platform that can help you build software with ease, accelerating development 10 times faster. Creating any application is simple. You can integrate with all the tools you need and scale all the way up to an enterprise grade application. Design, build, and deploy distributed microservices in cloud native technologies with embedded security, data consistency, and integrated validations. One of the best parts of BlazePath is that there are no vendor lock ins and it produces human readable code. That means that you can deploy your applications anywhere you want. Give BlazePath a try for your next project. Use the link in the description below to get your free account, download your local studio, and get additional cloud credits to deploy your application. So what is no code and low code? No code is a type of development that allows non-technical individuals to create applications without writing a single line of code. Some examples of no code platforms are Wix, Squarespace, Writer, Zapier, Webflow, Airtable, Typeform, Bubble, Retool, and Makerpad. Low code enables developers to create applications with as little hand coding as possible and sometimes none at all. Some examples of low code platforms are Appian, Mendix, QuickBase, and of course, Blazed Path. What are some of the other differences between no code and low code? With no code, you don't need to no code. Both can speed up your development time. No code is meant for very basic application requirements, while low code can accomplish more complex requirements. No code is easier to maintain since there is literally no code to maintain, while low code will take some added effort and time if changes need to be made to the code base. Low code is better to scale. You can expand your application as your team and skills grow. Low code platforms that are flexible in their architecture, component selection, and behavior logic may be compelling for startups. But why? Why would you even consider using no code or low code? Well, why reinvent the wheel? If there is a tool that can be used to build part of your application or even the entire application faster than you could manually build it, why not use it? Use off the shelf solutions instead of custom code when it makes sense. Especially if you're a startup, you want to create an MVP or minimum viable product as quickly as possible so that you can go to market and validate your idea. Why waste time and money building an entire application manually just to find out that your idea isn't really going to work? There are a couple of Forbes articles that I'm going to link in the description that give compelling reasons why right now is a great time to become a developer. The unemployment rate of developers is the lowest in the country. That means that if you're a developer, you have a very high chance of getting a job easily. But finding software developers to hire is getting harder. According to a CNBC news report, pre-COVID, there were 920,000 unfilled tech jobs in the U.S. alone. There is a huge digital demand right now because of COVID. Everyone is being forced online. Because of this accelerated demand, there are more jobs available. They may not be the most complex jobs, but they are needed. No code and low code platforms enable everyone to build applications. You can become a freelancer right now with little to no coding knowledge. I know that this might make current developers cringe a little, but that's okay. It should be viewed as an entry tier of programming. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you using Wix or WordPress as a freelancer to create a website for a customer that needs a very basic site with very little customization needed. But you have to understand the limitations of these platforms. And that brings us to the next topic. We need to understand when to use no code and low code. A no code application must not have any custom requirements. It must work within the constraints of the platform that it's built with. Low code applications can be simple as well, but are capable of expanding to meet custom business requirements by utilizing custom code. The most important thing is to understand the limitations of the platform before you start using it so that you're not caught off guard down the road. Another consideration is vendor lock-in. Does the platform that you're considering to use allow you to easily move to another platform if your business requirements become more complex over time? 
For most no-code platforms, you're going to be forced to start from square one if you need to move to a larger platform. Some things to consider are, do you have access to the generated source code? Does it depend on any proprietary runtime engine? Can you deploy your application anywhere or only on the low-code platform's cloud? Does it scale? If so, how does it scale? Vertically only or also horizontally? Be sure to check these things out before you get started and waste any time on a platform that will not meet your needs. AI, no-code, and low-code are not going to steal your jobs. There will always be innovation. Think about assembly lines. Robots have replaced people in many factories, but that creates its own new industry. Someone now has to build and maintain these robots. It's a never-ending cycle that will continue. But right now, these platforms are making our jobs easier by taking over the more mundane tasks. They allow us to outsource easier jobs to people with little to no coding knowledge, and they're also speeding up our production time and making us more efficient. This allows us to dedicate more time on complex issues and innovations. And guess what? Someone has to build and maintain these no-code and low-code platforms too. But what do you think about no-code and low-code? Have you used any of these platforms? Let me know in the comments what you think. That's going to be it for this video. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.